Hi, welcome to Down and Scale Replicas. Today I'm building a 148 scale Lockheed Dark Star. Now I've designed this myself and I have printed it on a Form Labs uh, stereolithography printer, printer. And it comes in seven parts. I have the upper fuselage with the inlet and with the nozzle integrated into it. Got the lower fuselage and I've built in a mounting hole into the lower fuselage. And then of course left and right wing halves a, uh, a fan face for the engine, the mixer for the back end of the engine, and then there's also a, a second part to the nozzle duct. And you'll see how all that goes together here in just a moment. Now you can see when these print out there are a lot of support structures, particularly when you take a look at these fuselages here that come along with them. And what I do is I do a rough trim on all of these before I make any of this available to uh, anyone else. So the expectation is that um, you'll, you'll get these parts as a rough trim and I will take care of all of this mess ahead of time. And the way that I do that actually is I have a cutting knife here called the Wonder Cutter. It has a knife head that vibrates at 40,000 cycles, 40,000 times a second and uh, it just slices through these like butter. So this is what I'm going to do, but now to use that I've got to have my Kevlar gloves and let's see, let's start with a wing piece just to show you how this is all going to turn out. So let's see. So here's where you end up after the rough trim, and this is what the kit will look like when I do ship it out. And uh, most of this just can be very easily trimmed up. I found that this material is very easy to work with. Just with uh, typical sprue cutters, you can just go through and nip those residual little stubs off of there, just like that. And then um, go through with some 400 grit wet dry sandpaper after that just to clean up the rest of it. Uh, you could use some 320 but I definitely wouldn't go any further than 320 because this material is really easy to work with and you will end up going through more of the material than you expect very quickly. So uh, start out with some 400 grit if it's not working for you work your way down to some 320 grit but uh, I wouldn't go any further than that. Uh, I tend to like using these uh, these sanding files. These are nail files you just find at the, the dollar store or Walmart, something like that. They're really inexpensive, but these can be used wet dry as well and just go over the, uh, the trailing edges. All of these connections are on the trailing edges. I, I did that intentionally to make them easier to clean up. Here's one that's, uh, that's on the surface there. That'll be really easy to, uh, to grab as well too. Now, uh, be aware though that uh, most of these supports you don't even need to go through and clean up because they're going to be hidden like inside the upper fuselage here. What you really need to do is just focus on those supports that are right around the edge here where these two surfaces are going to mate. And then the rest of them you don't need to worry so much about. And you'll figure that as you go through them. There's a couple that are going to be just like right inside the nozzle there. But again, real easy to trim up either with some nippers or just get an X-Acto knife in there and scrape them off. It's going to be really, really easy material for you to work with. So I'll go through, I'll finish trimming these up, I'll check the mating surfaces, and uh, we'll see how things go together. I spent about 30 minutes cleaning these up and then I scrubbed them with some water just to get rid of the sanding dust. And I primarily focused on the bottom fuselage on the surface of that rim and these two parts back here. And then on the top fuselage, this indented part of the rim right along here. In fact, I found it was useful just to run a file right in there along like that. Let's get up here into camera just a little bit better. Just run a file right in up along that just to get that edge square because that is the edge in which that lower part of the fuselage sits. If I can get it in there just like that. 
So the tolerances are really tight on these. Just walk your way around the edge there, get that back part in there. It's going to eventually snap into place. Uh, since this is resin, you'll need to use either super glue or uh, epoxy glue. And what I typically do with my super glue is I've got a fine tip on it like that and then what I'll do is as I walk along that edge I'll just put a little bit in there just as I'm walking around and just hold it. It's going to set up just almost instantly so you can do it pretty quick as you walk around and then the rest of these little artifacts here from the supports are going to get cleaned up then as we go through and clean up those edges after everything is put together. But before you do that what I would recommend is there is an aft nozzle piece in here which is going to need to go in like this. Now make a note as to where it says down on the nozzle. That's the part that needs to face down. That's what you need to be able to read when it's put together like that. It's going to sit in there just like that. And then the, uh, the aft end of the engine is going to sit in there and then the fan, the engine fan, is going to sit in there. But what I would suggest is that you go ahead and prime and get some color into the duct, the exhaust duct back here, and then into the inlet duct as well too. It's all one piece. I did that so that you wouldn't have any gaps that you had to clean up in there. And this join line back here on the uh, the nozzle, you're, you're really not going to be able to see once it's all put together. So get some color inside the uh, the inlet and the exhaust duct, and then get some color on the uh, the fan face as well as the, uh, the mixer back there. Now, this is the fan face. Right here, that's the fan face. And this funny looking thing, that's the aft end of the engine, that's the mixer right there. So don't get those too confused because they fit in exactly uh, the same spot. So you can get them confused, but there is the engine fan and it's going to sit right inside that inlet duct like that. And like I said, get some color on that first. And then that nozzle, that's the, uh, that's the mixer right there. That's going to fit right inside that nozzle back there like that. So those are the two parts that you need to get some color on, put them in there before you go ahead and put the top down on it. One last thing to show you here is the uh, the wings. So there is a uh, there's tab on each wing. Get that duct back out of there again. There's a tab on each wing and the tolerances are really tight. They're going to fit right into that slot there and they're going to slide in just like so. You can get some super glue on there and that's going to set up right away. Um, you can see on, on the top of the fuselage there some of the panel lines back there. You can see the panel lines on the wings as well too. All of those are in there for the control surfaces. You've got that, that joggle on the back end of the wing there where they change the incidence of the wing about midway through the design, pretty late in the design, so that ended up being a joggle right back there on the aft end, so that's represented. And if any of these print lines on here really bother you, most of them are going to disappear under a coat of primer and a coat of paint, so they're going to go away. But if they really do bother you, just hit them really lightly with some 400 grit sandpaper, and that's, that's going to take them right away, um, and you won't be able to see them after that. I wouldn't go any harder than 400 grit on this because you'll take off more than you probably want to, but just hit them with some 400 grit sandpaper, and that should take care of any of those print lines. So I'm going to go away. I'm going to get some primer on uh, the insides of this as well as some color and get back to you after that. Now that I have a bit of color on the nozzle and on the inlet duct, I'm going to go ahead and start putting them in there. So I just put a line of super glue down for the nozzle to make sure. Now make sure the down, you can actually see that once you've got it in there. And then I'll put another line. This is the, uh, the really thin glue that I'm using here. And that should be enough. I will glue my fingers together. That's inevitable. Okay. Maybe just a little bit more on the side there, just for insurance. A little bit more on that side as well. And that should hold it together. No danger of that going anywhere. Now, I'll tilt that up. We need to put that mixer in there, that part right there. And so actually I'm just going to put a little dot 
right around there to get it started. And it's going to be a really close friction fit. And then I'll just put a little bit more around the outside there. And that should be enough to hold it in there. All right. So now, same thing for the inlet duct. I got some light gray in there, which is going to be the uh, the overall color for the uh, the aircraft there. So, all right, let's get that fan face in there. And again, that's just going to be a really tight friction fit, and I'll just hang on to that while I put another drop around it there. Hold on to that just for a moment while that dries. Alright, I did not glue my fingers to that. A little bit more right around the edges there. And that is all that's needed. Alright, so let's just zoom out here just a skosh. No, we'll go the other way. There we go. Alright. Now then. The next thing to do. Now do plenty of, of pre-fit checks, but it's going to be this lip resting on the inside there. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to start from the back. I've kind of found out that that works better. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on both of these back sides here. Right there and right there. And I'm going to start with matching those up with the top half. Because once I've got those guys in there nice and snug, everything else falls together really well. Alright. Yep, got my finger stuck to that one already, didn't I? Okay. Alright, there's just a little bit of a lip on there, which will be sanded down. Good snug fit there, okay. Alright, so now that I've got that fit, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk it around the edges here. Put a little bit right in there. Yeah, I can see capillary action drawing it around. It's exactly what we want. Drawing it in just a little bit over the outside there. I don't really want to let the super glue run all over the place here because uh, when it dries, it will actually be harder than the uh, the resin material here. Uh, so we don't want big blobs of it running all over the place and have to deal with sanding that off of the surface there. But that sets up pretty quick and that's going to fill that gap there. Okay, that's probably about all we need right there. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it around. Heard a little snap there. Yeah, it's all fitting in there nice and tight. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to let the capillary action Thin CA just draw it in. And I can see it drawing it around there. Come back here, get just a little bit more. I can see it flowing into the crack there. Okay. So we're just going to make sure that that gets worked in. But there was a good snap there, so I know it's sitting down in there. Good and snug. Okay. So the last spot is right up here across the front. Yep, I can see it drawn in all the way around there. I'll just keep going with it. Make sure I get it all the way around, come back to this spot over here. That really should be all that I need to do. Just make sure I'm working that in there. Okay, that should be it. Now, what I will do 
is I will come back because there's a bit of a discontinuity there, just going to be a slight ridge there. I'm going to want to come back with just a little bit of filler putty, fill that in along the edges there, and then sand that down. Now this spot right back here I've learned I want to run a little bit of super glue. There's just a really thin spot there with that bottom piece and it's just the way that the the design prints, really no way to get around it. But I've learned that I do want to run just a bead of super glue in there to help fill that. And I can see on the back side that that's filling in. What I have is I have some Kickstarter here for the uh, for the glue, some kicker rather, zip kicker. I'm just going to flow that in there, let that super glue set up, and then I'm going to come back just with another spot of it. I don't want to get too much in there because again, like I said, that glue is going to set up and be even harder than the uh, surrounding material, but I just wanted to get that closed up right back there, and I think that's pretty well going to do it there. Okay, so I'm going to let all that set up for about 20 minutes. I'll come back, I'll do a really light sanding with some 400 grit just to see how things look. And then I'll come back in with, uh, with some filler putty just to tidy up the spots. Now in the meanwhile, I had done the, uh, the black back here on the exhaust because that's what I've seen in the photos there. And then I'm starting to put down my light gray um, in an operational scheme that I'm going to do on that part there. Alright, so I got a little carried away here. I actually put the wings on the uh, fuselage and then put a coat of primer on it as well too. Uh, things are going along pretty well. Let's take a look there at the bottom of the fuselage. Got those seams cleaned up there, around on the back side there as well too. Got a little bit of a seam left on where the wings are joining there. Didn't quite, quite get that as cleaned up as well as I might, but uh, overall it's looking pretty good. Um, had masked off both the inlet back there as well as the nozzle when I primed it. And um, what I'm going to do next, I think, is um, I'm going to do this in an operational scheme. So I'm going to get a light gray overall top coat on it and then uh, maybe do a little bit of a panel, panel line wash on some of these panel lines there and see how that comes out. Fresh out of the paint booth, I've got the top coat on as well as a gloss clear coat. So I'm using these paints which are new to me from Model Car World. They just recently started coming out with some military finishes. They're lacquers. They're actually directly from uh, PPG. So they're literally the same paints that are provided to the U.S. government to paint the military aircraft. I'm doing light ghost gray on this guy here. That's what you'd see on a Predator or a Reaper. So this is a hypothetical operational scheme for this airplane. I've been using a black basing technique recently. That's where you do a really dark overall coat. In this case, a really dark gray for me, um, oftentimes black. And then you go back with your top coat with just little fine squiggly lines going all through there. And what you're looking for is a really patchy finish. Some areas lighter or darker than others. And then you go back over at the very end with a very light, thin overall top coat to blend it all in. And that's what I've done here. I don't know if that comes across necessarily on the camera, but I really like the effect because it kind of gives a, a weathered, uh, in-use effect and um, it breaks up an otherwise monotone paint scheme. So I really like that. I have, although the uh, the model car world paints are gloss, um, I've gone back through with um, all clads aero gloss uh, to give this a, a very uh, wet glossy coat in preparation for decals. And I really like this because it does leave it looking uh, really wet. This is this is going to be a great surface to decal on, I think. Um, this is the first time I've used this. This is a lacquer, so the only reason that I could use this is because I was using the Model Car World lacquers. If you're using enamels or if you're using acrylics, you don't want to put a lacquer on top of those. But since I had some of this in the closet, I have not had an opportunity to use it yet. I thought I'd go ahead and try it on this model. And so far, I think it looks great. Um, I am going to put a couple decals on this since it is a, a hypothetical operational paint scheme. I've just been looking through my spares box. I came across these leftover 72nd scale Predator decals. I think I'll use the, uh, the U.S. Air Force. I'll use a few of the numbers uh, on the airplane here to mark it. I've got to kind of figure out what that scheme is going to look like. Fortunately, I stumbled across this set of decals in my uh, decal box as well, too, left over from who knows what, but I'll use the stars and bars, probably these guys here, 
on the wings then as well. So I'm going to piece something together here for the decals and start putting them on the airplane and uh, we'll see how it turns out. All right, it's time for some decals. I've started doing some decal work. I've got the uh, the markings on the wings here, and um, I think I've managed a scheme for the fuselage here. So what I do is I usually dip my decals in water for just a few seconds, and then I'll set them off to the side just to, to sit for a few moments, let that water soak in. I'll go ahead and get the other one going here as well. Set that off to the side here. So I'm gonna be working several at the same time. And because I don't know exactly how they're all gonna fit on there, I'm gonna go ahead and get them going here so that they'll be ready and so that they'll all still be able to be moved around on there as I need to position them. So I'd get all these going here. I don't like to have too many going at one time, but I think this is gonna be manageable here. So I just picked out some, uh, some random numbers off that Predator decal sheet that I had, and as well as the, uh, the US Air Force, the USAF, and then uh, Stars and Bars came off of that, uh, that super scale sheet. That I had. So I think, let's see here. I've got these really nice pointy tweezers you can see here. These work great for decals. You can really just grab an edge there. And I just wet my fingertip here. Kind of wet the spot on the fuselage there. And then I'm just going to slide it off. That's not quite ready. There it goes. Okay. It's just about right. Okay. So I'm just going to get that roughly positioned on there. And that's just about where I want it. Now I've got a, a, a soft paper towel here just to blot away the big parts there. And then I've got a brush here, just a paintbrush. Got a little bit of water on the end here. You can use that to position. I want it to be just a little bit lower there on the fuselage. Get a little bit of water on it there. Okay, so I kind of like the way that that's starting to look there. Is that straight? Got to look at it from a lot of different angles. Let's just blot up the water that's around it and then go ahead and grab the one for the other side so I can be working these at the same time, try to get them all positioned to where they're as even as I can get them. Okay, there's that one. Got him on there nice and crooked, but here's where I go with the brush. I'll use the handle, the dry part here in some cases to really do some rough movement here. I think that that's in about the same position there. Uh, might have to go up on the fuselage or I might have to go down. I have to move this around a little bit. Just keep moving it around. Keep looking at it. I might actually pull this one down just a little bit here. Okay. So I think that's about in the same spot on both sides. Okay, so I'm just going to blot this up a little bit now. I'm not actually blotting on the decal yet because that will pretty much put it down permanently if I'm not careful about it. And I want to keep these guys to where they can still be positioned. I'm going to put the star on here and then I'm going to get the number on here. That way I can kind of figure out if I got the spacing between them Okay, yeah, actually I like that a lot. Um, I'm going to move that bar down just a little bit here. Let's get a little bit of water underneath it because it's not wanting to move down very well. Actually, I like that a lot. That is just about where I want everything to be. And let's just blot up a little bit of that water. Get those guys to where they're not going to move around too much now. That's just about right. And I'm going to look at this from the back here tilt it up so I can kind of squint at it. Yeah, those look like those are all in line. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. It's all upside down to me. There we go. Let's get him positioned a little bit better here. Got to put some water there to kind of give him what he needs to move there. 
Okay, I think he's he's getting close. All right, let's get that number on there, and then I can do the final positioning here. I don't like to get my finger in there because they tend to like to stick to my finger. Let's see, there we go. Okay, I really prefer to use the brush. That's what I should be using. Okay, there we go. Get those guys on there, get him moved around so that he's about where I want him to be. Yeah, so now what I'm going to just check is left and right. Are these lined up like this? They're pretty close. I think I want to bring that star in just a little bit here. And then let's bring the 432. I'm just eyeballing it here, but hopefully that's going to be close enough. Yeah, that's that's pretty good, I think. That Yusef maybe comes back just a skosh. Alright. Now then, what I'll focus on is are they both lined up really well? Let me blot off a little bit right here. Okay. And I'll really focus on are they aligned? Are they straight? I'm going to bring it over this way so that I can see this side a little bit better. That 432 is really crooked now that I can see it. And that star is a little crooked as well too. So Get that guy pulled up a little bit there. Yeah, okay, so that's starting to look just about the way I want it to be. I'm going to move him back again. 432, okay. So now are they at about the same position on the fuselage, about the same height? They're pretty close. You know what helps if you look at them like in, at, at strange angles, upside down, so that you're not paying attention to what is actually written. And you're really just paying attention to where the markings are. Sometimes that helps me. I think that's about where I want them. Uh, I'm going to look at them that way. Yeah, that's looking about right. Look at them from the front. Yeah, that seems about right. Okay, so I think I got those about where I want them to be. And now, as I said, I really haven't touched the decal itself. But now it's time to blot out any remaining water that's underneath that decal. And just, it's very gentle. I kind of roll onto it. I'll start from off the decal and I'll kind of roll on to the decal there. Try to squeeze that water out from underneath it there. And of course, you don't want to move the decal in the process. But once you do that, the decal, if you've got a really glossy surface like I have here, it's pretty much going to be stuck down at that point and it's not going anywhere. Now you notice I didn't use any decal set to prepare the surface for the decals because I have such a shiny glossy surface here. I didn't think I really needed it. And the uh, possibility of these guys silvering is pretty low, I would think. All right. I think that's just about where I want those guys. Now, what I will do, I think out of habit more than really necessity, I'll put a little bit of microsol on there and that just kind of helps them settle in to all the nooks and crannies. I'll just get a little bit on the end of the paintbrush and I just kind of paint over the decal very carefully. If they're not really set on the surface they can move around again on you here. But on this really glossy surface and then particularly on this light paint skin, this light gray here, really don't need to be doing this because the the chances of silvering are very low and uh, of course it's a very smooth surface so I uh, like I said this is more out of habit than anything else than really necessity doing the star out here on the wing at the same time and then uh, at that point walk away just leave it alone um, you know I'll just let this be for an hour or so I'll come back and see how things are looking if it was a, um, a, a really rough surface if there were uh, a lot of things that the decal needed to, to fit or conform around I might come back in about 15 minutes with more microsol um, but you know this is going to work out really well just like it is I'm just going to let this sit for a little while I'll come back and do another clear gloss coat on top of this and then I'll work on some panel line washes 
I'm doing a few things at once here, but among them I thought I'd do just a light panel line wash to, um, to just give a, a, a little bit of highlight to the panel lines that are on the model. You can see that I've already done it here on the top, and then I've done the, uh, the wings as well too. And really, it just, it just gives a hint that those control surfaces are there. I don't want anything really uh, to stand out too stark there, so it's a little spotty. You can see it more in, in some places than others, and really that's the effect I was looking for. And I thought I would just walk through that process on the bottom of the model. Now what I'm using here is, let's get this in frame here, I'm using Ammo MIGS panel line washes. I really like these, they're enamels. I'm going to use the light gray on this. It's uh, a MIG 1600 is what it is. So their enamels, what I've done is I've given this a gloss uh, acrylic coat. You want to put this down on an acrylic coat and I'm just going to use a paintbrush. I'm getting things ready here. I'm going to dip the paintbrush first in some enamel thinner just to get the bristles loaded with the thinner and then I'm going to wipe that off there. Alright and then just going to walk around each one of the panels. I've really, I've, I've stirred up the panel line wash itself very well. And I'm just going to walk around each one of these lines here, kind of let it flow in if it wants to flow. Don't be too messy with it here. That's maybe a little bit more than I really need in some cases there. It flows pretty well. If you can get it to flow into the lines, that's great. Getting it a little over the lines, that's okay too. On this one back over here. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of making a mess there. But I just walk it around the lines here. There we go. And then, so I'm going to do this for all these lines here on the bottom. And then I'm going to leave it on here for about um, 15 minutes, then. And I'll come back at you in about 15 minutes. Okay, back again. So I've uh, applied the wash here over on this side and already taken it off. Uh, we'll go ahead and take it off on this side over here. It's been about 15 minutes or so. Enamels take a long time to dry. In fact, I've, I've put down some gloss enamels in the past. It's taken like two weeks for them to dry as a top coat on an airplane. Um, but what I like about these here is the enamels are slow drying and about 15 or 20 minutes gets them to the point where they're no longer flowing liquid but they sort of settled into the surfaces but they're really still easy to manipulate and that's when it's time to go back through with just a, um, a cloth, just a soft cloth here, this is a paper towel, and um, start to lift them off. So what my technique here is that I work um, perpendicular to the panel line here. So for this panel line that's going this way, I'm actually going to go through and just gently wipe them off, come and wipe them off this way, and just kind of work my way around here and you can see it's staying down there in the panel line. If the panel line's deep enough, it'll stay down in there. But then you're going to get it off from the surface around that there. And it's going to leave kind of a halo effect around there. Just work it until you get off what you think is appropriate here. The nice thing about these is you could take them off in their entirety if you wanted to and just start over again. They're really easy to work with. That's the way. I, that's the reason I really like these enamels here. I'll work here on the uh, the nose gear bay as well. Get that off of there. That's going to leave it with the appearance um, that it's a little bit dirty, but that's what I was really going for here. Um, that's the reason I selected this particular color for panel line wash. There's any number of different colors out there. You could have selected a, a really dark gray, more of a black, a charcoal or something if you wanted to. I really wanted something that was going to be a little bit more dirty, as if this had been used in the field. Hopefully, you can see how that effect turns out here. It might be a little bit difficult with all of the, the gloss sheen on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dull coat or a semi-gloss on top of this, and that'll help show it off a little bit better too. Uh, you can see, I think I already showed you on the top side how that ended up looking there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, put a top coat of semi-gloss on there, and that's just about going to wrap things up. Be back shortly. 
And so the decals have set up now and I did give it a clear flat coat. I'm really not in love with any particular clear flat product that I've used in the past. I've used micro flat. I've used some lacquers uh, and some semi glosses which I'm never really happy with because on occasion some of the, sometimes those lacquers will attack the, uh, the previous clear coats that may be acrylic or the decals that I have on the kit. So right now on this one I used um, Vallejo's matte varnish. And I always thin it down a little bit and I put it on in a lot of light thin coats. And it works out really well. In fact, in this case, um, it gave me a, a really nice kind of a semi-gloss sheen to the model. And I, I really like the way that that's turned out. Now I've gone back into the digital model and I've actually I've deepened up these control surface uh, panel lines here. So they'll take that panel line wash a little bit better than what you see here. So those will be a little bit deeper on the uh, the next printed kits there. I think the fuselage though overall has taken that panel line wash really well. So I'm really happy with the way that that turned out. Now recall that this is a 5 seconds inch diameter hole, a mounting hole for a brad, brass rod. Uh, you can easily find 5 seconds inch diameter brass rods at hobby stores or uh, even sometimes at uh, hardware stores in the specialty hardware section. Uh, so that's going to look really nice mounted in a uh, flying pose then. It's difficult to see what the light that we have here on camera, but if you look down the inlet duct, you can see the engine fan face in there. And if you look down the nozzle duct, you can also see the engine mixer down there as well. I've taken some static photos of those. You can see those a little bit better with the light I had on them at that time. Now recall that there are no decals included with the kit, so like me, if you want to do something in an operational, a hypothetical operational scheme like I've got here, you need to go into your, your decal stash there. Look what you've got for some leftovers. Usually everybody has some, some stars and bars uh, at a minimum. You may even find some numbers and, and some U.S. Air Force or, or other markings that you may prefer in your decal stash. Stash. But I did build an earlier prototype in the all white uh, top and black bottom scheme like you'll see them in the museums today. I've not seen any markings on those particular paint schemes. Actually, it's realistic to have no markings on the, uh, the actual uh, paint schemes uh, that the test articles flew in. This I thought would be fun though uh, in terms of sort of you know a what-if type scheme if these had actually gone into service. I really think that this is going to look nice displayed in a flying pose next to some of my other UAVs. I'm, I'm working on a Global Hawk as well as Predator, Reaper, and then the uh, the X-47B as well too. So this is going to make a really nice addition to that collection and I hope that you agree.